Hello, and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today we're talking about the super entertaining subject of fire stops. Although this is maybe not the most interesting topic when it comes to isolation and soundproofing, I don't know how many topics there are that are super fascinating with sound isolation, but this is an important one if you're building the double wall system. So anytime you have a, a wall where there's going to be an air gap, there's also going to be a gap at the top where fire can easily come out. So I'm going to be talking about a, an important safety feature of this system, which is the fire stop. I'm going to teach you what a fire stop is. I'm going to teach you how to build it so that it's still isolated isolated and doesn't connect the two walls together. So stick around. If you're on this journey of building your soundproof home recording studio, then you are in the right place. But I have something special for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It's 45 minutes of in-depth teaching, and it goes through exactly all the things you should think about when you're designing and building a home recording studio. So check it out at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to build fire stops for your double wall system. Okay, first thing is what is a fire stop? Uh, if you're not familiar with construction, then that's totally fine. Fire stopping might mean nothing to you, and it didn't mean anything to me when I first started on this journey. But in Roger Weiss' book, Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros, he does talk about fire stops briefly. Um, and he's a big fan of fire safety. I am too. It's important to do this. But essentially, a fire stop will block fire from traveling from your wall system up into your ceiling and then ideally also traveling between different sections of your wall. So if we look at this diagram here of just a normal wall structure, this is just from one of my CAD files um, with a studio I'm designing right now. And you can just see that, you know, a typical wall is built with stud framing, usually 16 or 24 inches on center with insulation in the middle in the case of, of these walls. And the fire in just this sim single wall, if it were to start inside one of those cavities or bays, um, it can't easily spread. The insulation usually is fire rated, so it won't catch on fire. And then also within the studs, it won't easily travel left to right. It won't go down through the bottom stud and it won't go up through the top stud. So it'll be contained within that, that bay, which is good. That'll reduce the spread of the fire. With a double wall system, we have a problem because now we've created a chimney, essentially. We've created a fireplace in our, our wall cavity. So any fire that starts inside the wall, um, there's air that's just gonna naturally go up and will feed the fire and the fire can easily travel through the wall and it can also easily travel into your ceiling without you potentially even knowing that there's a fire in your wall to begin with. So that's a dangerous situation. So in construction, the way to block that is to create what's called a fire stop. And essentially what we're gonna do is put a, a cap on top of that chimney. So you can see in this diagram here, the double wall system, there's a space, that one inch air gap between our two walls. And we essentially wanna cap that uh, without ruining our isolation. So herein lies the predicament, because it would be super easy to just put a piece of wood across the two walls, cap it up, all right, great. But then we've just coupled our double wall system and negated all the hard work we did to isolate them. So how do you do this? So this system, I have to give Roger Vice credit. It's in his book, like I mentioned before, Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros. And it's kind of a cool little way of getting around this, this issue of connecting your two walls while still stopping the fire, while still keeping isolation. So what he does and what I do in a lot of my designs with these double wall systems is I'll start with... Um, leaving a little bit of a, a gap, like making my inner wall a little bit lower, which normally is the case in general with these wall systems. So I'll make that wall lower than my outside wall. And then what I'll do is I'll add in compressed insulation, like a, a more rigid. This, I think he recommends four pounds per cubic foot. You could use three pounds um, per cubic foot of density. Uh, and that will help you with the rigidness of this this structure here and then what i in this design i'm using either rock wool or thermofiber and it could be you know one and a half to two inch thermofiber and then i'm compressing it down to one inch so you'll see in this diagram here that that thermofiber layer is is taking up an inch above the um, top plate of my stud wall and then i'm putting a layer of half inch drywall that will then span across that gap and actually touch the exterior wall so completing that seal so fire can't easily get up through the chimney uh, like we had before 
And then what we're going to do is seal up where the uh, the insulation bat and the half inch drywall meet and in between where it's compressed, we're just going to put a, a line of uh, fire caulking uh, across there. So in the US, that could be like 3M makes fire caulking uh, in Europe or in Australia or New Zealand, wherever you are. Um, you can get your local fire sealant and put that in there and create an airtight seal and also help with the spread of fire uh, in that direction as well. Now, when you're adhering this system to the studs, you know, you could use wood screws, you're technically then connecting and sound could technically travel from the exterior wall through the half inch drywall through a wood screw and then down into your wall, although this is probably very minimal. So you could place those like every 48 inches on center or as minimally as possible just to keep that thing intact. Or, you know, you could use contact adhesive, which is, is you know, just a strong rubber based glue to keep everything together and, and attached to the, to the top of the wall there. So in essence, that is the idea of how to build the fire stop and keep isolation. So if we look at this other perspective, this shows the perspective view um, in my CAD file, and it shows that this is a continuous system that goes across all the tops of all four walls in your studio room so that fire can't spread to the ceiling easily um, and it'll make your system and your rooms a lot safer for fire safety. So this is a quick little short video, but it's an important one on fire safety. And I hope you've gained some ideas on how you could create a fire stop in your own home recording studio if you're using this double wall system. Remember, you can use rock wool, you can use thermofiber or any insulation bat that has some good density to it so that it can maintain its structure when you're putting all this together. And make sure to use the fire caulk, make sure that it's touching across and sealing that air gap so that fire and smoke cannot travel up through the wall cavity. All right, like I said before, if you are on this journey, check out my free soundproofing workshop. You can just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to teaching you all about acoustics and soundproofing next week, every Monday, new videos. All right, see you later. Thank you.